Hello and welcome to the show. Listen, we've got a great show planned for you. You know, I'm so happy that you joined us. You know, we've been talking about the joys of fatherhood, but you know, this is all about new beginnings. And listen, I am excited, excited because we have a special guest, you know, is celebrating the joys of fatherhood. What better way to have one of my favorite people uh, to join us on the show this week? We're talking with Mr. Harold Young. Orangeburg County Administrator. So listen, I just want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy because it's coming up next. You're invited to the Summer Pop-Up Shop Saturday, July 22nd, 2023 from 10 to 4 p.m. Orangeburg County Conference Center, 1643 Russell Street. Vendors and food trucks. Shop your local brands. For more information, Tammy Media Group, LLC.com. Again, you're invited to the Summer Pop-Up Shop, Saturday, July 22nd, 2023, from 10 to 4 p.m. Orangeburg County Conference Center, 1643 Russell Street. Vendors and food trucks. Shop your local brands. For more information, Tammy Media Group, LLC.com. The Cecil Williams South Carolina Civil Rights Museum is the Palmetto State's first and only museum. It honors a generation of people, black and white, throughout the state of South Carolina who deserve to be remembered for their unselfish commitments and sacrifices. Enjoy an immersive and entertaining virtual tour. For more information, visit www.cecilwilliams.com. Hello everybody, it's Finkley of the Michael Finkley Show, and you're watching Gold right now. Why? You're watching The Tammy Show. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. I told you we've got a great show planned for you. You know, I'm excited about our guests because when I talk about somebody that's doing it, I call him the hardest working man in this area, but really, really all over. Uh, <laughs> he is the county administrator of Orangeburg, South Carolina. He has more than 20 plus years of county government, economic development, planning, community development experience. He's a native of Cordova, South Carolina. He uh, has his bachelor's, business administration, USC, Aiken, master's in management from Southern Wesleyan University. I mean, he's a dad. He's a husband married to the beautiful Cassandra Pyatt Young. He's got two wonderful children, beautiful children, Alex and Lauren. And uh, I tell you what, he's got some folks that really, really love this man. So without further ado, I want him to come on out, Mr. Harold Young. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Tammy. You, you 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 really made me feel like somebody just now. <laughs> Listen, you are you are, and we really appreciate you. I'm I'm just so glad you could be on the show today, um, Harold. It, it's just a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure being here. Yeah, man, you're the hardest working man. I'm telling you, man, I had to give you that because you're one of the hardest working men around here. You know, every time I look, you cutting deals. Hey, blessed <laughs> to have people around me like yourself. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate the opportunity as well. Listen, mm -hmm. I just want to ask you, who is Harold Young? Because I know you, but I want the viewers to know who Harold Young is. I am a, a country boy from Cordova, like you said, Canterbury Road. Shout out to all my people who, who are CBRs for life, uh, with uh, Danley Drive and the rest of the crew. And I just grew up in Orangeburg County. And I love where I live and I love to make where I live better. Right. You know, talk about talk about your family, because, you know, I'm talking about Miss Cassandra and Alex and Lauren and your mother and Harriet, your father. Talk about your family. Yeah, I, I am blessed. I have good parents. My mother, Ruth Marie Young, my father, Harold Young, and uh, my wife, Cassandra, Alex, and Lauren, I'm, and my sister, Renee. And uh, God bless them. My sister, Monica, who passed away. We just we just grew up uh, loving each other and supporting each other, and that's what we try to do every day. We try to um, support each other as much as we can. And, and, you know, sometimes being a father, you have to understand that not all of our family or all our kids are created equal. Um, they have different ways of doing things and different time frames in which the light clicks and mm -hmm. everything comes in motion. But but I love them to death. And that's that's the big part of it. And 
I try to continue to be supportive because my dad was very supportive. That's one of the things I, I can always say about him. I don't care what I tried to accomplish. He would always try to be there to try to help me out or try to like, go forward. If I, if I was coming home and say, Dad, I need to go to the moon, he'd be like, man, I think I know somebody at NASA. Let me give him a call. You know, All right. he, he, he was that kind of dad. And I try to do the same thing. And I try to be there for my uh, family as much as I can and uh, be there for my community as well. Yeah, and, and that's a big part of what you do. You know, Harold, when you talk about being a father, what qualities do you think make a good father? Well, it's not being perfect. Because as dads, we don't we we make mistakes and we we don't do everything right. Um, there are times where where you ask yourself, "Wow, did I did I teach that? Did I do that?" But it's all about showing up. It's like you you keep coming and and you being there and showing up and and letting them believe and know that you support them. It's it's like in their worst of times or in their best of times, you you believe in showing up. Yeah, that, that that's a word there. So, you know, you have a daughter. So what is it yeah. like? I, I was a daddy's girl. So what is it like raising Lauren? Oh, my gosh. It is a roller coaster a mile a minute because that, that <laughs> child will keep you in stitches. And and she is she is a ball of activity. She cannot stand to be still. She She's always into something, doing something. And uh, she has these crazy ways that she will just out of the blue, just do crazy stuff to make you, you know, be like, oh my gosh, girl sit down somewhere. <laughs> but um, she, she's a very loving child and uh, she supports me and and uh, we have a good relationship. Uh, a lot of people like to say that um, just like me left out too long, she's spoiled. But, you know, <laughs> I try to just say that that's just our relationship and that's my daughter. Yeah, yeah, daddy's girl, daddy's girl. Well, listen, you know, yeah. talking talking about a son, and you talked about your relationship with your father. What are some of the things mm -hmm. that you've been teaching Alex that your father taught you? Well, number one, um, you got to be there for your family and your community, and and you got to understand that sacrifices have to be made, and that's one of the main things that I try to teach. And um, uh, my son and I have a unique relationship because he's. He's one of those ones that that is uh, more of an introvert than I am. And so it takes me a lot to get used to that because I'm usually the one out somewhere running my mouth and it takes him time to get comfortable around people. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times you see the opposite of yourself in your child and you're like, well, why you, why you just don't go talk and run your mouth like I do and do such such? But then you have to understand that you're different. And then also I look at all of the lessons that I learned and uh, some of the things that impact me as a child and some of the mistakes I made as a young man and a young boy that when I see him do something, I have to remember, you know, how, you know, <laughs> you, were, you did some of the same crazy stuff yourself. So um, the biggest part that I try to do and impart on him as a young man in this uh, 2023 is just the, the most important thing is watch the, the company that you keep because, you know, Peer pressure is tough and it's tougher on young black males and having the right people around you will keep you from doing um, and making stupid mistakes. And, and that's the one thing that I always um, caution him on is, is don't, you know, somebody taught me a long time ago. Uh, one of the jobs I had, um, one of the managers used to do all kind of crazy stuff. His name was Ed Fry. And so um, it was, you know, six people working at the time. And I was a manager trainee at this furniture company. And we knew we only had six members of the staff and that was fully staffed. Uh, we get to the job one day and it's got a sign that says, uh, now hiring. And he basically said that, you know, uh, we are looking to fill two positions. And so he just put that sign on the door arbitrarily. So when we got to work before the meeting, Different people were talking and it was like, man, you know, as hard as I work here, I ain't going to let him do me like that, such and such, so and so. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, you going to put up with this and such and such. And so both of them walked out. <laughs> so when the meeting started, he said, I just wanted to see how y'all were going to react. He said, but it, it taught an important lesson. He said, the guy that listened to the guy that said leave, let somebody else direct his future. And he said, so mm -hmm. don't ever direct your future. Mm -hmm. Make your decision yourself because he was just trying to see how we were at and that guy walked out the door because the other guy told him to 
And wow. so that's one of the one of the things that I like to impart on my son is always direct your own future. If you find yourself in a situation of people about to do wrong, remember that it's your future at stake. And if you want your future to be yours, it's the decisions that you make and not others for you. That's right. And, you know, Lawrence getting ready to go to high school. Um, what grade is Alex in? Alex is in the uh, going to the 11th grade. 11th grade. Yeah, that's right. He's a junior, so he's going to be heading on to college real soon. Yes, ma'am. We, we would hope so. Yeah, that's right. He's getting ready. To, look, getting ready to go out in the world. Yeah. So, so yes, that's ma'am. that's the main thing. Well, you know, Harold, you talked about lessons and the lessons that impacted you as a child. Talk about mm-hmm. one of those lessons that your father taught you that you're sharing with them as well providing and and being responsible. Um, One of the things that I always um, took from my father, um, he would always try to impact you. So a lot of times my dad did construction back in the day. So summer jobs, he would try to hire, you know, give some work to some of the kids that were in the church. And so they could buy the school clothes and uh, do some things for them to help them out to earn some money. And if there was a problem to be solved, he seemed like he was always on the end of solving that problem. And that that to me showed me personally that, you know, you have to do one thing. And and the way he did stuff for so many other people made me had to learn how to share, Mm. because that's one thing I, I from a long time ago, I really had to learn how to share my parents because so many people were captured by my mom and my dad and how, you know, you know, a lot of times young people tend to gravitate to people that they feel like are are special or listen or give them that sense of love. And so a lot of family members, kids in the community, kids in the church would gravitate to my mom and dad. And it's like I had to learn at an early age to share. Mm -hmm. And my kids, um, they're the same way because they see me do a lot for other people in the community, other kids and stuff like that. And they had to learn that same lesson. Wow. That's that that's a that's a big lesson too. That's a big yeah. lesson to learn. What what's your most treasured memory of your family? Man, my my one of my most treasured memories is back in the day, we used to go to my grandmother's house just about every Friday night. And it was it was like it was an area in Roseville and the ladies would be at my grandma's house uh the men would be at mr Washmay's house my aunt would be doing her cooking and selling and and we would go to the bridge and fish and sometimes we would fry fish and catch eels and then the friday night lineup uh would be uh dallas dukes of hazard dallas and and falcon crest and the funny part about it was i was such a dallas fan because i'm a cowboys fan yeah on the theme song is the same theme song for the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. They would also play the stadium. So after watching Duke the Hazard, I would get hyped because I loved the intro <laughs> to the to the TV show Dallas. And as soon as they showed Cowboy Stadium, I'd be hyped, and everybody would be getting mad. It was like, man, man, man. But we had so much fun, so many good times. Every it was it was just like Friday afternoon. Everybody loaded up and went to Grandma's house. And uh, that was, it was the spot. It was almost like a Thanksgiving or a Christmas every Friday night, and we did that wow. for so many. Wow! Wow! Now that's a that's a wonderful memory to share, and and hopefully you're passing that on. You know, doing something like that and passing yeah. that on. Well, in these days and times, we we don't do it quite every quite Friday, often. but 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 typically when it comes to my family. Um, I'm the I'm the fellow that I call and say y'all come on because anybody who knows me knows I I like to grill and cook out and stuff like that and that's right. and uh, that's right. I tend to tell them to come on and we usually have a good time. That's right. Listen, we we listen. I I still I'm I'm getting my uh I've tasted some of your cooking. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know you love that that fried fish that snapper too. Hell yeah, we can do a little something. We can do a yeah, little something. That's right. That's right. Well, listen, Harold, I'm, I'm going to take a break and we're going to come back. And on the second half, I want to kind of talk to you about your career. I want you to kind okay. of talk to us about Orangeburg County. But I thank you so much for sharing the, the joys of fatherhood. Yes, ma'am. And, yeah. and it, okay. it is complicated. And to the, to the teachers out there that 
at Howard and Edisto. We, we appreciate all your patience with my kids. <laughs> How about that? How about that? We're going to be right back, Carol. Thank you. <laughs> The Orangeburg County Conference Center supports downtown Orangeburg and our surrounding communities. The 6,000 plus square foot space is ideal for groups of up to 400 people attending corporate meetings, conventions, workshops, and special events. Conference Center staff are inspired to ensure that everyone can enjoy the modern amenities state-of-the-art ballroom that accommodates up to 400 guests banquet style and 430 guests theater style. A warming kitchen with hot boxes, ice machine, refrigerator, freezer, and counter space. A lobby that accommodates 150 guests with special events outdoors. The comfortable outdoor amphitheater has a video wall and seating. Adjacent to the amphitheater is 12,000 plus square feet of green space that extends events outside, plus complimentary on-site event parking and additional parking across the street. Your event can take place all in one spectacular location. We welcome your special event in Orangeburg. Stay tuned, you are now watching The Tammy Show. This is Roger Gass, welcome. Welcome back to the show. Can you hear me okay, Harold? Yes, ma'am, I can. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Listen, we, we, I think I'm getting some feedback, Harold, in it. and do you have an earpiece in your ear? Uh, yes, but it's not connected to this. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know. We're getting some feedback, but we, we still are able to, to sound okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, county, Orangeburg County Administrator. Yes, ma'am. Tell us exactly what you do, because a lot of people think that, you know, you sit in the office and you talk to people, but it's a whole lot more than that. No, I... I, I do it different than most because I like to get out and, and go look at things and make sure the stuff is um, working like it should. And Orangeburg County is 1,100 square miles from tip to tip. And that's a lot of territory to cover. I spend probably two days out the week out the office going to the different areas from Utahville to Norway to the Springfield to Woodford, looking at projects and getting a vision for what we're trying to do next. And um, it's, it's exciting because, you know, being a being a kid that grew up here, you see change and you see the positiveness of it. Uh, one example is the, the clearing of the backside of the campus that we were working on at South Carolina State in conjunction with uh, the president and uh, Conyers. And, and just the reaction that a lot of people have of being just just the standpoint of being able to see the back of the beloved campus. And it's just vision like that, that Dr. I mean, uh, Colonel Conyers and myself shared and to see it come through fruition with the uh, with the um, backing of county council. It's just things of that nature, the conference center, the library, you know, seeing uh, areas of Orangeburg transformed and having people come from as far as away as Texas, Atlanta, California and be like, wow, we don't even have this in our neighborhood. And it makes you proud to say that you're from Orangeburg County when you look at the water parks, the why, the things that we have that, that we didn't have when I was growing up, to know that I was a part of it, it makes me feel special. That's right. I want you to kind of talk about what is it that people need to be, that people need to know about the beauty of Orangeburg County and how they can spread that word. It, it's, it's one of those things that we're, we're in a transformational era. Um, because our location between uh, Columbia and Charleston, a lot of times our citizens automatically compare us between compare us to Charleston and Columbia and want us to have the same that they have. Um, they're, those are bigger areas with a bigger tax base uh, than we have. But at the same time, we're coming in. We're going to make changes as well. So what you need to do is just compare us to the to the 
uh, places that are similar to our size, like the McCormick's and other places around the county, around the state that are similar to our size and see the progress that we've made. Um, at one point, when you look at a lot of the stuff that has come through our community and has yet to come, and I'm so excited about the stuff that's coming, I wish I could talk about it uh, right now, but it's still in the fruition. <laughs> but it, it's enough to put a smile to my face and have people believe that that we're coming next. I mean, we're starting uh, to see a lot of focus on Orangeburg as far as housing and residential. We'll have subdivisions that are coming that are uh, 200 houses and 300 houses at a time. Um, that is unique <clears throat> to us, something we hadn't seen before um, because people recognize our market. Uh, 601 in that corridor is, is really booming and you're gonna see a lot of change as well as North Road and 301. And we're working hard every day to um, lure additional economic development to the town um, from the standpoint of creating more jobs and making more opportunities for our individuals to stay live here. And That's so good. what we're That's trying good. to do is work with uh, the community to make sure that we grow ourselves in a responsible manner to make it where you can stay here and raise a family. Mm -hmm. And that's important, you know, because you have two HBCUs here, well, and you have really three schools here, and you want, you want the students to stay here and work here. So how important yes. is that to bring that economic development here? here? It is very important because if you look at the legacy of a lot of people around Orangeburg, they'll tell you they met the spouses at the college and they stayed. And so, you know, a lot of people who uh, basically came to South Carolina State and now make a living in Orangeburg County and raise their kids and send them through the school system. So we, we look at it from that standpoint. And, um, and we're not just going after uh, certain things. We're going after uh, projects that are technical in nature that gives students the opportunity to practice what they've learned as far as their career. And um, with the technology that we have uh, and, and shows like this to get people to understand what we're doing, it, it, it only helps us to be better. Yeah. And you know the one thing, the one thing that that I um, that I'm excited about, and I tell people, you know, I just had someone ask me today, Harold, uh, how you like Orangeburg? I said, I love it, I love it, because I see the growth, I see the transformation, you know. Oh yeah. And you know, one time a lady, she said, well, when I was there. I wouldn't stay. I wouldn't stay in Orangeburg. I said, well, let me tell you something else. You go to Charleston, you're gonna pay for five hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars for a home. You come to Orangeburg, you do a little better. You know what I'm saying? And you're in the middle. You can get places, and that's what I love about Orangeburg that you can get to so many places within mm -hmm. hours. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. When you look at it, we were one of the first locations to have a Tesla charging station because we were exactly uh, between Miami and New York. We were the, mm -hmm. the middle ways point. And Orangeburg County is basically situated in the middle of state of South Carolina. We have CXX and Norfolk Southern, which means the rail comes through our county in both directions. We have major uh, thoroughfares 601, 301, I-95, I-20 that comes through, uh, I-26 that comes through our county. So we're, we're, we're uh, the global logistics triangle because things have to come through here. And so we, we look at ourselves as the, the, the Atlanta of, of, of South Carolina. You got to come through here if you're traveling. <laughs> <laughs> come on, the Atlanta. I love it. I love it. And so mm -hmm. I know you can't talk about some of the things that are happening, but you did mention, you know, like the water parks. You, yeah. you, know, you mentioned specific areas. Talk about how important or how, how challenging that was for you to be able to do that. Um, it, it took vision, it took uh, work, and it took the vision of the county council. And that's one of the things I'm most proud of is Orangeburg County Council has had a legacy of pushing the, pushing the envelope forward by uh, impacting the penny, getting that created, getting that funded and going, and that has really transformed our community. Uh, the good part about it is the best is yet to come and I say that because there are, there are major projects that are funded, not, not just talked about. The money is there, and they are on the drawing boards. We have a big project that the county is working on in conjunction with Claflin at the old Crest Building, downtown Orangeburg, which is the big building right across the street from the um, Farmer's Market in downtown Orangeburg by the fountain. Uh, that's going to be rehabbed and turned into 
uh, center of education as well as uh, uh, downtown housing, the Boulevard Project, which is already funded, and now the Cecil Williams uh, Museum will be a part of that Boulevard Project. That'll be moving forward shortly, and the Boulevard Project is already funded. Orangeburg County is working on doing a new courthouse project. That'll be a, a major impact to downtown at the Owen Dixie location downtown, and we're moving forward with that. So there, there are a lot of projects, and Claflin is coming out of the ground with their student center. South Carolina State has multi-million dollar projects that are on the board uh, for a new RTC center, the transportation hub. They're making new improvements as far as their course offerings and things of that nature. And OC Tech has just finished and finalized not too long ago a building on that campus. And, and, uh, and all of our um, centers of education are thriving. We're about to get a new high school built uh, for the first time in a number of years. A lot of innovation and, and upgrades are being happening throughout the community to the other schools. Uh, the school district are, are handing over some of the older schools to the county to make community centers out of. So it's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening within the next two to three years that's going to change the face of Orangeburg County. Wow. Listen, you said a mouthful how I tried to start writing some of the things down. Of course, I know some of them, but um, it's going to be a great day. I love it when you say that. So I want you to say that. It is what, how? Always going to be a great day in Orangeburg County. Orangeburg <laughs> County. Listen, now what's the takeaway you want viewers to glean from this interview? You know, with everything that we've talked about, fatherhood and about Orangeburg County, what do you want them to take away? Number one, me as a person, as an administrator, I want to let the individuals know that I'm I'm the same Harold Young from Canterbury Road, uh, Danley Drive, that I haven't changed. And one thing about me, I'm still down to earth country boy. I don't even walk with the air that I am county administrator because I just live amongst and love the people. And and that's one of the things that that I take seriously because I I work for you guys as the people. And I wake up every day trying to earn your tax dollars to make sure I can make this community better. And so my legacy, once I finish being county administrator, I want to look back and, and list all the things that I had a part of and a vision for that has changed the face of Orangeburg County so that when my kids grow up and come back through, they can say, well, yeah, this changed and that changed during that time frame. And somebody else, child uh, from, from the country or from Canterbury Road or from Orangeburg, born and proper, which there are 46 counties in the state of South Carolina. And I think I'm probably one of three that, that actually work in the county they're from. And that's, oh. that's things that I don't take lightly. And I work with all aspects of it and with our community and to see the selfishness of, you know, when I look at our, our first responders, our law enforcement and the people who put their lives on the line in the communities that we serve, I, I'm in awe of the people that, that, that really go hard for Orangeburg County and, and we love it. And some people come here and, and they have certain things to say, but at the end of the day, this is a place that we call home and it's only going to get better because we're striving to make it better. And, and we, we appreciate that. And a lot of the things that we do as far as the, the next step in this community, we understand that educational upgrades, uh, quality of life upgrades, the biggest lift that county council could have made is the partnership with the MUSC um, to upgrade our hospital and, and get us going in the right direction. Signals people that we're here to come, we're here to change, and we're here to make Orangeburg County better. Mm -hmm. Wow. Carol, you just gave us a, a whole lot to glean from. And I'm hoping that, like for me, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for just being that mentor and, you know, taking me up under your wing and, and uh, me being here with you. And, and you are such a visionary. And people, I'm not saying that to boost his head up. I'm saying that because this is how he is. You know, and that's the reason I decided that I am making my home Orangeburg, South Carolina, where I'm from Charleston, it's still home, but physically being in Orangeburg, South Carolina. You know, I'm still gonna do I appreciate you as being the epitome of, of customer service at the Orangeburg County Conference Center. And Thank everybody you. knows Thank that you're synonymous with that center and the level of customer service that it provides. So we thank you for that. 
Well, I thank you. Experience. That's what you said. It's an experience. Harold, there are a couple, two things I want to ask you. What's next for you, Harold Young? Well, I've, I've been working for Orangeburg County, believe it or not, 28 years. Wow. And, um, wow. and um, I, I still got some more things that I want to accomplish. But after that, I look forward to uh, seeing my kids go to college, grow up and make their way through life. And, um, you know, looking forward to the day that that we can uh, accomplish all the goals that we're looking to accomplish as far as making change in Orangeburg County. Yeah. Wow. And three words to describe you, Harold. <laughs> Uh, down to earth, uh, fun, and all about them Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> How about them Cowboys? I tell you. Listen, Harold, it was such a pleasure talking with you. Thank you because you are busy. Thank you thank so you. much for taking the time out to speak with me today. And thank your staff for helping me get on and navigate this platform. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Listen, your phone ringing. I know you got to go. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. Now. Take it easy. Thanks so much now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Listen, when I tell you that's the hardest working man in Orangeburg County, really in the whole, I say in the whole state, because he's a hardworking man. Let me tell you, I can tell you some stuff. One o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. I can call Harold. This is what's going on. So I want to thank you, Mr. Harold Young, Orangeburg County Administrator. Listen, I'll tell you what. He gave us some nuggets, gave us a lot to think about. And when it comes to Orangeburg County, I tell people, really talk about the county. Talk about us saying that it's great. As Harold said, it's a great day to be in Orangeburg. So if you if people come to town and they're from out of town and they're wondering, tell them how great it is to be from Orangeburg County. All right. Will you do that for me again? Thank you so much, Harold, for being on the show. Thank you for Cassandra, Alex and Lauren for sharing your dad during this time. This is dinner time. And I want to thank you all so much. Listen, I want to thank all the viewers. Thank you for always tuning in to Tammy right here on the YouTube channel, the Tammy TV show. I want to thank my producers, Tiana, Willie, Felicia. Thank you all so much. Remember, hit that subscribe button on YouTube channel. That's the Tammy TV show on YouTube channel. It's going to give you the cub, the notifications, and we want you to hit that button. Remember, let's be a blessing to somebody today and every day. Thank you again for joining us. And until the next time, take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Join us on the next Tammy. I'll be talking with Nakisha Scott Randolph. She's talking about PTSD because this is PTSD Awareness Month. And she's a licensed marriage and family counselor. So listen, I want you to join us Thursday at 7 p.m. Always on the Tammy TV Show YouTube channel. See you then.